energy. One type of energy is thermal energy. Thermal energy is the energy in vibrating atoms. Pool balls, when I shake hands, this is in, if I'm looking in a solid, zooming in on the atoms in the solid, they're actually moving in place, they're vibrating. Okay, that is a form of energy, or thermal energy. And the total amount of that vibration is thermal energy. So the average amount of movement is indicated in temperature. But the total amount is thermal energy. Thermal energy can be transferred in three main ways. The first way is called convection. So convection is the movement of matter due to temperature differences. So if for example, air, if you have a mass of warm air, a mass of cold air, and they interact with each other, it causes movement in the form of wind, right? Because of a density difference. So convection, if we think of temperature, remember, is the average kinetic energy in the atom. So how much the average movement of those atoms are. Um, Air. So hot air rises because it's less dense. So if we go back and think about temperature and the cars on Highway 280. If the cars are moving fast in, in a car, remember the gas laws. We have temperature in the middle, we have volume here, and we have pressure here. Okay. If we increase the temperature, I mean, this is temperature, and I'm gonna keep, okay, if I increase the temperature and I keep the pressure the same, the volume increases. So there's more space, they spread out. So temperature and volume directly related. So in other words, as you increase the temperature of the air, you increase the volume, if you keep pressure the same. Hot air, then, is made of atoms moving faster and they're spread out, they're less dense. So if it's less dense, it's going to rise. So this is why hot air rises. Cold air, is more dense. The atoms are more packed together. They're not moving as much. So even though it's still a gas, so they are spread out, but they're not moving as much. So there's less, less space, less volume. Density difference that really causes convection to happen. So if the hot air is less dense, it rises and moves up. The cold air is down, is more dense, it stays at the bottom, closer to the earth. So that movement of matter is due to really density, which is due to the difference in temperature. So remember, density is mass over volume. So everybody loves density. So matter moves from where there's a high concentration of thermal energy to where there's a low concentration of thermal energy. It's like if you think of diffusion, where matter goes from a high concentration to low concentration, the same with thermal energy. All right, so it's going to go where there's a lot of thermal energy to where there isn't much thermal energy. So heat transfer is gonna go from where it's hot to where it's cold. So density is how much matter is concentrated per volume. So it's how much matter is packed into a certain space. So it's mass over volume. Everybody loves density. So a way to remember it then is like a valentine. 
Okay, so this is, indicates the M mass over volume, V. So volume. The second type of, of thermal energy transfer is called conduction. And conduction is the direct transfer of thermal energy. So this is when the atoms are in contact with each other. So if you touch something that's hot, you touch the stove, or it's hot. So that thermal energy transferred directly from the stove to you. That is conduction. Matter flows from where there's a high concentration of thermal energy to where there's a low concentration of thermal energy. So matter is going to flow from where it's hot to where it's cold. It's not going to flow from where it's cold to where it's hot. Because it's due to the concentration difference. So think of diffusion. If there's a high concentration of thermal energy, it's the, the thermal energy is going to transfer from there to where there's a low concentration of thermal energy. So it's going to go from hot to cold. It's not going to go from cold to hot. The third type of thermal energy transfer is called radiation. Radiation is the transfer of thermal energy through electromagnetic rays, such as light, light waves. I looked at uh, the electromagnetic spectrum, which really shows the different types of light waves, right? Um, that's energy. And when you transfer that energy, let's say from sunlight to the surface of the earth, that is called radiation. Waves, think of like a slinky waves. Waves are really vibrations that carry energy. That's what they are. Vibrations carry energy. So energy moves through waves. And there's really two main types of waves. Electromagnetic waves, which are light waves. And mechanical waves. And mechanical waves need a medium through which to travel. So they need to have something to travel through such as air particles. Electromagnetic waves are made up of electric and magnetic fields. So that's why they're called electromagnetic waves. And these waves are transverse waves. So if the, the wave moves perpendicular to the direction of travel, so if if you think of it with the slinky, if you hold, if you uh, take one end and go up and down like this, I'm creating transverse waves. So the waves are going this direction, but they're traveling this direction because they go down the slinky. So that's transverse because it forms a 90 degree angle. So they're perpendicular. Electromagnetic waves travel as transverse waves. So it looks like a slinky when you take one end. Again, transverse waves are waves that travel perpendicular to the direction of motion. So the waves are going up and down, but the waves, they're actually moving this way. Okay, so those are transverse waves, and those are waves, those are the electromagnetic waves. Longitudinal waves, the waves travel the same direction of motion. So the wave and the direction of motion is the same. So if I take a slinky and push it to one end, the wave is going this way and the direction of travels is going that way. So it's like compression, expansion. So the electromagnetic spectrum just shows the different wavelengths and their frequencies on a range. And a visible light ranges from 400 to 700 nanometers. So these are measured, the light waves are measured in nanometers. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. The abbreviation EMS. This means the electromagnetic spectrum. And what this is, is just a visual demonstration of the different wavelengths and different frequencies of energy in the electromagnetic field. And the range of the wavelengths goes from thousands of meters long to a trillionth of a meter. So it's extreme variation. 
Now remember, if we're looking at a wave, the distance from the peak to peak, and the scientific name we call these are these are it's a crest. We'll call it peaks, so crest to crest, or the distance between the valleys, which are called the troughs. Either one of these, that is a wavelength. That's the length of the wave. So the distance from crest to crest or from trough to trough, that's a wavelength. And energy travels, this electromagnetic energy travels in different wavelengths. It's from very short to very long, from a trillionth of a meter to thousands of meters long, like radio waves. So we can demonstrate that in a electromagnetic spectrum. The frequency is how many waves there are per second. So if we have, if this is one, if this measured one second, and this is one second, these waves have a higher frequency. They're more frequent. That's frequency is. So there's more of them. Over here, we have lower frequency. They're less frequent. So these are longer wavelengths. So these would be like radio waves. These are shorter wavelengths. These would be like gamma rays. So we measure the wavelengths in nanometers, lowercase nm. And in one nanometer is one billionth of a meter one nanometer, one billionth of a meter. And we're going to just look at the range of different wavelengths there. This is going to, we're just going to draw electromagnetic spectrum, starting with the longer wavelengths and ending up with the shorter wavelengths. So here we have, I'm starting to create the electromagnetic spectrum. And what I'm showing here right now is the wavelengths, but I'm actually using meters instead of nanometers. Uh, typically, though, when you're measuring wavelengths, you use nanometers. Um, however, I'm just going to show you in meters because we have such extremes. We have 10 to the fourth meters. Way over here, 10 to the negative 12th. The types of waves along the spectrum. Radio waves are the longest. They can be like thousands of meters long. Microwaves are next. We know the longer wavelengths are over here, less energy. Higher energy over here, shorter wavelengths. Radio waves, the longest. Then microwaves, then infrared waves. So these are all longer wavelengths. They have less energy than the other waves. The radio waves have the least energy. Then in just this one part of the entire electromagnetic spectrum, just this part is actually visual light waves. So this is actually the part that we can see. The rest of the, the light we can't see. The next, the shortest, uh, shorter than the visual light waves are the UV or ultraviolet light, then X-rays, and then the high energy gamma rays. So you'll notice the picture below shows wavelengths, they're very long, and they get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. Very short here, very high energy. High energy over here, lower energy there. High energy. So if we just look at this electromagnetic spectrum, just this one part is what we actually can see. The light waves we can see range in wavelength from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. 